Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, seeing how we are at the end of Nickelodeon Month... I can safely say that I am not the least bit happy. Why? Because I have to review what many consider to be a double order of bullshit with extra crap and a side order of dead cheese. The fast food abomination simply known as Good Burger. Based off of the hit sketch performed on the kids' show, All That, Good Burger was an attempt to take one line Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger, can I take your order? and somehow turn that into an hour and a half movie. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger, can I take your order? No, but you can take this and shove it up hard! The film stars Kel Mitchell, reprising his role as Ed, the idiot fast food attendant who works at the inappropriately titled Good Burger. It also stars Keenan Thompson, which is weird because he never really starred in any of the Good Burger sketches, but who the hell cares? Let's just get this Asperger review out of the way. Alright, so it starts out with our protagonist, Ed. Welcome to Good Burger, home, home of the Good, good Burger, can I take, take your order? order? Huh? Oh, God. Ed, I see you. What the fuck is that? I see you. I want to stay here with you! We love you, Ed! Come with us, Ed! Why, Ed? Why? Get oh. ah, I fly with fast <laughs> feet! Ah. Woo! Wee! Fly with hamburgers! Ah. Ah. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger, can I say- Stop! Stop! <laughs> I need a minute. So it turns out that opening was just a dream, but unfortunately the rest of the movie isn't, as Ed rushes out the door because he's late to work. This is bad because nobody else at the restaurant knows how to take orders, which really pisses off huge, angry Robert Wolves. Just give me two Good Burgers! I've had enough to hear with Good Burger! Hey, I don't need this! I had a cameo in Batman! So we see Ed rushing down the street as he trips into some girls playing jump rope, drags one of them down the street, accidentally steals a woman's baby, collides with some basketball players, mixes up the basketball with the baby as the baby is dumped into a basketball hoop. You know what? I'm gonna need another minute. <sighs> so Ed finally makes it to work, only to find that there's another restaurant called Mondo Burger being built across the street that could be dangerous competition. But their boss isn't worried. Good Burger has been here for over 40 years, and nobody is putting Good Burger out of business! Yeah! yeah. That's right. yeah. Nobody! Nobody! Yeah! yeah. 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 That's right. yeah. Nobody! Nobody! Yeah. Yeah. Abe Pagoda, what are you doing? Is there just really no movie that you'll say no to? I mean, did you read the script? You know it couldn't have been a good movie! My guess is he was in some sort of contract or something. It probably went something like this. Abe, the president of Nickelodeon says you have to do the Good Burger movie. Hell, he can't do that. It screws up all my arrangements. Sorry, Abe, you're under contract. Tom, can you get me off the hook? For old time's sake. Can't do it, Abe. Come on, you get to wear the little hat and everything. So we then cut to our other main character, Dexter, who's in a classroom being taught by... Hey, Terry, my brother. Oh, Jesus, no. <sighs> being taught by Sinbad, with an outfit made out of wrapping paper and a haircut modeled after a blowfish. His personality, though, that's a little harder to figure out. I know you're thinking, my brother, why? Why would this man give us a test on the last day of school before summer starts? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. Because your mind never sleeps. Right on, my mid-70s, early 80s, Black Panther, hippie, environmentalist, black exploitation, flower child... brother? Dexter thinks he's out of school for the summer, which means he can spend the rest of his time partying. But there's a change of plan when he accidentally crashes into Ronald McDonald here. See, when I left school today, I didn't think I was gonna run into you this summer. Or I didn't think you was gonna run into me! I mean, just run into me like this! You in trouble with me, young man. You in trouble with no, me! No, listen, Mr. Weed, listen. It wasn't my fault. See this nut on some oh. rollerblades? He skated oh. into my vision sight, and I couldn't see nothing, so I swerved. Roller and then blaze. we were spinning uh, around. Okay, like, hey. um, how long does this scene go? You know how much that car cost me? No. Do you know? No. That's you a $22,000 car. $22,000, and that's just the base price. Um, Give me driver's license. Um, regarding my, my driver's license... Are you I seriously? Get, but you Did they just run out of script? That, that, I mean, that, it seems like they're just one. making this shit up now. No, no. When they put it in my hand. You don't have a driver's license. No. I know you don't have no insurance, D. 
Uh, yes, I hate to do this, young man. I hate to put a black man in jail. But I'm going to call the police. Black man in jail? I hate to do this. You ain't got the... I'm just a kid. It's like they knew they had no story and little jokes, so they just told the actors to make some crap up off the top of their heads. We have to film an hour and a half movie length somehow. What should I talk about? Who cares? It's a kid's film. It's not like you actually have to try. No, let me fix it. Let me fix it. My God, they're still going. This could be handled with just one line of dialogue. Oh, shit, I need a job. Why is that so hard? Finally, a different scene. I, I, uh, no, no, come on! How much longer do I have to see Raggedy Ann and that pink cushion argue? Just get on with it! Get on with it! Oh wait, no, no, not that way. I, I didn't mean like that. Just, no, 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 that's wrong, that's wrong. It's a bad time, it's a bad time, it's a very bad time. Very bad. No, no, stop it, stop it, stop it! All right, I have no choice! Elephant! I never thought that would be my call back to reality, but I'll take it. So Dexter has to get a summer job. You see, one sentence, that was so much easier. As he applies at the Mondo Burger, where everyone dresses like they're at an 80s gym. From now on, your life is Mondo Burger. You can forget about your friends, you can forget about your family, because Kurt is now both your mother and your father. But Dexter, sadly, doesn't seem to fit in. Get the loser out of my face! Loser? Oh, now you about to push me a little too you far. You want a piece of me? Yeah! Extra crispy, please! I hope Saturday Night Live ain't watching. So he goes to a place where his clear lack of talent and absolutely no experience will do him well. But you said you wanted nothing on it. Yes, well, I expected a meat patty. Dude, a meat patty is something. You said nothing. Fizz, is a meat patty something or nothing? Don't get philosophical with me, kid. It's not that kind of movie. We're all born to die, sir. So Ed and Dexter finally meet as Dexter vents his woes. One more good shake. Good, good. Keep them coming. Um, dude, don't you think you've had enough? Don't tell me when I've had enough shake. I'll tell you when I've had enough shake. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap at you. <laughs> I'll chase it down with some fries. So Ed tries to convince his boss that Dexter should be given a job at Good Burger. Hey, Mr. Bailey, this guy needs a job. Can he have one? No! End of movie. Bye! Come on, Mr. Bailey. He really needs one. He can do fries. Otis does fries. Yeah, but look at him. How much longer could he possibly live? Nothing can kill me. I'm a Pagoda. All right. So Dexter is hired on as one of his jobs is to make deliveries in, I'm not kidding, the Burger Mobile. Come on! I'll take you for a spin! <laughs> All is not well, as the ruler of Mondo Burger comes in to intimidate our heroes. The second we open our doors, Good Burger goes in the grinder. What is up with this kid? It's like someone put Sting, Frankie Muniz, and Ben Stiller in a blender. It's kind of surreal. I'm Ed. Huh. Well, Ed, you better watch your butt, man. Okay. So Mondo Burger does open up to probably the most overblown fast food restaurant opening ever. Even Planet Hollywood doesn't get this type of opening. I mean, what are they expecting to see in there? Oh my god, they have fries! Honest to god, fries! So they take a look at one of the Mondo Burgers to see why their business is doing so well. It's huge! How do they do it? My god, they use actual meat. No raccoons at all. So Ed asks Dexter if he wants to hang out and... Do you think you can get me to a hospital? I think I broke my ass. Okay, yeah. I'm convinced now that Abe Agoda wasn't supposed to be in this movie. He just wandered onto the set, threw on a costume, and started walking around bumping into people. And they were just like, hey, he's not hurting anyone. Just keep him in the movie. You and Godfather, man! Show some dignity! As Ed and Dexter become more acquainted with each other, they discover that they have a complicated relationship. I don't like you. Can you get that through your head? What? I'm Great Nose Boy. 
And lo and behold, an obnoxious douchebag with unconvincing dreads will put grapes in his nose and constantly shout bloopity 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 bloopity. And it will be called the 11th level of hell. Dante then wet himself and cried in fear. So it turns out Ed brings his own special sauce that he made himself. As the people pass it around, they realize it's pretty good. I personally don't trust anything that looks like a blended fraggle, but everyone else seems to, as they market it to the people raising their profits again. But Dexter makes Ed sign a contract that lets Dexter have 80% of all the money that they make on the sauce. Presumably high as a kite, Ed agrees and continues to be shed upon by the people he thinks he knows and loves. Well, here you go, Ed. You get to keep $13. Well, that's almost $14. <laughs> wow, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, plain and simple. But Ed, being a sentimental guy, asks Dexter if he wants to hang out on the rooftop and just look at the stars. Yeah, apparently Ed's deep. Well, what kind of problems do you have? Most of them started when I was a little kid. That's when my dad left me and my mom. I must have lived in 15 places since then. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you actually trying to have a moment? Are you actually trying to emote an emotion? Other than disgust? I remember the last time I saw my dad. I was seven years old. I'm sorry, it's a little hard to get into this moment, but one of the last scenes we saw was... I think I broke my ass. That makes it a little tricky. I give up. I'm going home. And I ain't acting. I'm really going home. Fuck this movie. The next day they get a call to deliver a special order to the only other celebrity they could afford in this movie... I feel hungry. Take the food, take everything, just please don't do any rapping. So they give Shaq his order and even managed to get a little endorsement from him. Oh good, this is back in the days when his endorsements actually meant something. I ordered tomatoes on this good burger. I don't see no tomatoes. Well, hang on. Uh, consider yourself tomatoed. <laughs> wow, that's pretty bad when you're making Shaquille O'Neal look like a good actor. Meanwhile, Mondo Burger is just pleased that Good Burger's sales are suddenly rising as it just steams their PVC spacesuits. Good Burger is still in business. Well, what are we supposed to do about it? Our burgers are already twice the size of theirs. Captain, may I recommend firing our photon torpedoes at the restaurant? Kitchen! Yes, sir? Make our burgers bigger. Bigger? But they're already- BIGGER! BIGGER! But there's still the problem as to how to stop that special sauce Ed created. So they decide to send in a beautiful woman to seduce Ed and to get his secret ingredients. If anyone can get the sauce out of Ed, she can. Okay, I don't want to know how she gets the sauce out of Ed. I just assume that's private. Ooh, I haven't felt that in a while. So Roxanne tries to seduce Ed, but her attempts are futile against a thick wall of idiocy. You are so hot. Oh, well, I often sweat at work. <laughs> My god, Hallmark cards are funnier than this! So, you hungry? Yes, I am hungry. But not for food. I'm hungry for you. Oh, well, well, I'm not edible. So Ed agrees to go out with Roxanne and... Oh, 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 hold up. Will somebody give Abe some direction back there? Or give him a cookie or something? I mean, come on, that's Abe Vagoda, not a dish rag! He's the funniest thing in this movie, and I don't even think he's supposed to be there! So Ed goes out with Roxanne as Dexter also asks out his co-worker named Monique. But I think he's doing that because he secretly wants Ed. I mean, look at them. They look exactly alike. I think there's some closed doors here that need to be opened. 
So Roxanne tries to get intimate with Ed, but this turns out to be extraordinarily dangerous, and she discovers that love hurts even more than she knows. <laughs> Abuse to women is funny. After Roxanne gives up at the Hitler burglar, Ed and Dexter start to suspect foul play, as they think Mondo Burger is using illegal chemicals to make their food larger. So they disguise themselves as, oh Jesus, really? You're gonna go the drag route? Water! Water! I need water! Whoa! Water! Oh! Water! Oh! Water! Why, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were from a subpar childish sketch comedy show. After they work their way inside, our two heroes find out Mondo Burger's dirty little secret. Mondo Burger is people! No, it turns out that they were using illegal chemicals. But our heroes are caught, as the head of Mondo Burger decides to do the first logical thing in this movie. Have them both committed. Finally, they should have done that at the beginning of the movie. So the two partake in Idiot Interrupted as they try to figure out a way to escape. But while that's going on, the Mondo Burger people partake in Mission Implausible as they try to sabotage Ed's sauce, making everyone who eats it incredibly sick. What's going on hey. in here? Guys, you woke up, Abe! It's okay, go back to sleep, go back to sleep. Abe says he's gonna call the police, but then Mondo Burger decides to have him committed too. I somehow doubt that was very hard. So our three nut jobs are stuck in the mental institution and have to figure a logical way out. The best solution? Start a synchronized dance number, of course! Look at them go! You know, for the mentally disabled, they sure do have good on-the-fly dance choreography. I'm really impressed. And as your sense of implausibility may have told you, the guards start dancing too. Yeah, let's go over here and dance! I think it's our job to stop out-of-control stuff like this, but I'm sure if we let our guard down once, nothing bad can happen- No! So, that's why we're not paid well. Okay, so they steal the keys, get out of the room, but how are they going to get out of the actual building? One of the local crazies decides to help them out. <laughs> you know, for as bad as this movie is, I do like its sudden burst of cruelty. But how is a frail old man like Abe Vigoda going to get out of there? And that's the last we ever saw of it. It's okay, I landed on the fat kid. They all try to make it a good burger to stop the customers from getting sick, as it suddenly turns into the end of the Benny Hill Show. Yeah, that's nice. Crash into cars, break some teeth, endanger people's lives. But at least the good burger will stay open. But Ed and Dexter make it in time as Ed stops an old lady from eating one of the burgers. This needs to be censored. So Ed and Dexter explain about the sauce and stop all the orders, just before they hatch a plan to break into Mondo Burger and expose him for the liars they are. But first, this joke. I need a hot jacuzzi! You know what? Fuck it. So they figure out a plan to get into the Mondo Burger and get rid of all their chemicals. Gee, I sure have a hungering for some rolled gold pretzels right now. How do you expect me to get up there? Oh, it's easy. You just jump on a burger, jump on the fry, and then you hop on the cup, and then shimmy up the straw. <laughs> what is this, American Gladiators? What is that? A joke? So they break into the Mondo Burger and try to intimidate the rest of the group. Mama never had one of these with the electronic numbers. We always had to turn the knob. Get him. If I were you, I wouldn't come any closer. Stand back, men. I think that's real ketchup. Oh no! How are they gonna go around the restaurant covered in ketchup and mustard? <laughs> that's just silly! Oh, that's right, smack your ass. Just show us what a likable character you are, you little troublemaker. Uh-oh, how's Ed gonna screw up this time? Oh, Ed, you nincompoop. But I bet it'll all work out in the end somehow. It always does. Uh-oh, it looks like all those chemicals are causing the burgers to explode. That's so out of the ordinary, I dare call it wacky. You people had better run faster. There's no telling what other zany antics could possibly follow. Ooh, it's that character nobody likes. Do you think he'll get his comeuppance in the end? Well, that all depends. Do you want cheese on that? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it looks like God has finally smoted you for making Jingle All The Way, Sinbad. Good luck trying to clean that up. What a mess! Well, it looks like our two lovable skanks have finally come out on top.
There were scary moments at times, but was there ever any doubt that they'd make it in the end? I don't think so. So, after all this wild, crazy, and totally off-the-wall antics, how else can they possibly end this movie besides saying the classic line, Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger, can I take your order? <laughs> you certainly can, Ed. You certainly can. trying to do better. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. About this contract, man. Uh, what did you say we just... Forget it. Uh, you don't want to be partners? Well, no. See, is it because I'm black? Ah, a funny joke!